I will describe you what exactly is this protocol and what it allows, because uh, it allows much more than is currently implemented on any DEP. So, first of all, our main priorities when we built it were MIT license, which allows developers to do with it whatever they want. It have no limitations. Uh, we do not, do not have any protocol fees, and uh, ultimate gas efficiency was our main priority. We released already three versions and preparing to release next version, and each time we are winning like tens of percentages of uh, gas efficiency. Uh, I don't know how we do this, but uh, it is already much, efficient, much more efficient than any other protocol. But with each new release, we push it forward somehow. Uh, by the way, I'm writing uh, smart contracts at one inch. Okay. So, and yeah, for sure, uh, this limitable protocol, it incorporates unique features. So I'll tell the, ab about the features on next slide. So yeah, we have pre and post interactions. So you can configure your order in that way that it will execute arbitrary, arbitrary actions before it will be filled and after it will be filled. Also, those one who is filling uh, the orders, they can make kind of flash swap. They can get maker assets, can uh, get uh, taker interaction call, do whatever they want with uh, these assets, and then uh, transfer from uh, taker what happened. And this is also this feature also allows reentrancy. So if you want to fill five orders, you could start filling them in a reentrant call, so you would get all assets from all these five orders, and then you can uh, fill them somehow with uh, any protocols or fill them mutually on each other, and then when you finish your execution, uh, transfers to makers would happen from your wallet. Uh, that's uh, how one inch fusion is working. Uh, it's uh, mutually filling orders to each other, and the rest of the amounts is swapped on DEXs. So there is also possibility to program custom logic for transfers. So it's not only transfers tokens from maker to taker and then from uh, taker to maker, but instead of token with transfer from, you could deploy custom plugin. We call them proxies, but now we're switching to plugin name. And uh, yeah, you can write some smart contract. You can use its address as a token address in limit order protocol. And limit order protocol would, ex would call transfer from method with the possibility to add extra data. And you can write plugins for using NFTs, for using any other token standards, for batch transfers. So potentially you could make trans uh, orders which uh, swaps five tokens for three different tokens. So arbitrary logic is possible here. Uh, for sure, some examples like ERC721, ERC1155, uh, they are already implemented there in the repo. And the uh, next feature is dynamic prices. Uh, so your order could not specify exact price. You could write any arbitrary smart contract and provide static method, view method. And uh, when uh, order will be filled, prices for this order, they will be extracted from this method. Using this method, you, for example, can make Dutch auction or maybe you can use uh, prices from oracles. You can make stop loss order or any other thing. Ah, I'll, I have a separate slide for this. So predicate, uh, it's thing when someone is trying to fill your order, there is a possibility for order to have predicate where limit order protocol would make a static call which, and check if it's possible currently to fill this order or not. And for sure, we support smart contract signatures. Uh, that's uh, pretty easy, but some people don't know about this. So you can have smart contract and still uh, be a maker in limit order protocol. You will have not a real signature because digital signature is usually something 
involving your private key. But this thing allows uh, smart contracts to have digital signatures. It works differently. It works like limit order protocol would make a call is valid signature on your um, maker address. And if it's returning uh, no, uh, special magic value, this means that signature is valid. So smart contracts are themselves responsible for checking if, if their signature is correct or not. And I have a number of potential applications which are currently not implemented. So you could have Dutch auctions, you could implement uh, uh, this uh, uh, dynamic, dynamic getter, dynamic price, and you can have Dutch auction. You can sell your NFT or something with price uh, following some curve which you could uh, define somehow in smart contract or you can make constructor for anyone to make their own auctions. Uh, y y someone could implement stop loss orders. They could check uh, with predicate that price on Oracle is uh, at some threshold and this means that they can be filled or can't be filled. It's also possible to have uh, trailing stop loss orders, range orders. Just imagine you can, could place your order to be fully sold in some range. For example, you're gonna sell, I don't know, wrap it either from 2,000 to 3,000, you could build uh, some, uh, some piece of smart contract which with this limit order protocol would work as a range order. So you would probably need here smart contract signatures and dynamic prices. Also, arbitrary trading strategies could be implemented. So it's just a matter of imagination. And for example, with uh, uh, pre and post interactions, it's possible to wrap and uh, unwrap and uh, your liquidity with uh, kind of our compound wrappers. On the, for example, this could be a stake it either or fly it or something else. And one more thing is that um, it's possible to create limit order which would behave uh, as liquidator inside of it. So it's possible to encapsulate liquidations of different money markets and this would make these liquidations more accessible. I mean uh, such orders would make liquidation much much easier for anyone else. You don't, uh, if you would uh, try to liquidate someone you would not need to uh, write special software for compound or any other money market but you could just fill this custom uh, made limit order or I, I feel that there is like infinite number of possibilities here to implement so we as uh, developers we implemented uh, features uh, like uh, technical features but product features they are almost infinite so people could came up to any other crazy thing. Um, I discussed with one guy, so they uh, tried to build a, a borrowing for NFTs. They are providing liquidity. You could use your NFT as collateral and you could borrow and they provided buyback and liquidation feature by limit order protocol. It was much more convenient for them to use it because it just reduced uh, their code base significantly. And that's it. It's a pretty short presentation. Uh, I have, f I had 15 minutes, so now we have five minutes if you have any questions. There is, there is one question. You guys feel free to ask more. Um, the first question is, can you elaborate a bit about how one can build stop loss? What are the main challenges to have a stop loss on debt slash aggregators? Yeah, for example, if we would uh, try to implement stop loss on this limit order protocol, I see that we can just use a predicate feature, technical feature. So it's kind of, uh, we need to build piece of software, you know, front end, DAP, decentralized application, which will uh, create orders, which will have special feature called predicate. And uh, whenever someone will try to fill this order, this predicate will be executed and uh, limit order protocol will understand if it's possible for now to fill it or not. 
And for example, inside this predicate, uh, we should use oracles. For example, we could make a limit order, which is, for example, we have price of either, I don't know current price, it's probably 2000, okay. And we afraid that it will fall below 180 and uh, 100, uh, 1,800. Okay, and we can uh, make an order which will sell it 1,750, but only when price on Oracle is below 1,800. And this would allow to have a, a permissionless and decentralized stop loss limit order. Because now if you are placing limit order on centralized exchange, it could not work sometimes. It depends. If price moving too fast, it could not work. Uh, same thing happens here. If price moving too fast, it's probably no one will feel you. But now here, if you have this in DeFi, you are not depending from single entity like Binance or Coinbase or any other centralized exchange. It's a matter of arbitrage. So anyone is capable to feel you and you could probably have a better guarantee that nothing will be broken and it will work. Uh, yeah, how fusion works, uh, basically it's limit orders where price is usually uh, like minimal possible price for the order, but uh, they, we call them private orders. This means that there is only one address in the Ethereum network who can fill them. And this address belongs to special smart contract, we can call them fusion, but technically it's called uh, settlement or one inch uh, limit order settlement or something like that. And this smart contract also have checks who can use it. And uh, currently mm, only few addresses can do this. We call them resolvers. These resolvers can fill those orders, uh, but these smart contracts also have Dutch auction. So each fusion order is uh, getting worse with each second for users, but it's improving its price for counterparties, for these resolvers, for any takers. And what happens here that price is improving for these resolvers and they can potentially try to wait to get better price, but they compete with each other. You can wait, but any other resolver could pick up these orders and fill it. So competition among resolvers make them fill orders with uh, uh, smaller profits, um, smaller arbitrage profits and better rates for users. And moreover, they are also incentivized uh, to be, if they want to proceed with filling those orders, they need to be in top list by delegations. That's why they compete for user delegations. And uh, they can express their competition with uh, farming, far farms. They have farms, they uh, give away to users who uh, delegate tokens to them. And this competition uh, allows users to play with APY. So what I see that some users, they do re-delegation to rebalance, to like get higher APY. And yeah, that, that's how it works. Uh, this makes all those orders uh, like Dutch auction for every user. And uh, for, from what we saw, but we are also preparing uh, analysis for this, that most of the users are getting much more better rates than they would have if they would just um, execute the transaction on their own. because. If uh, you execute transaction on your own, just basically you, s you pay for your gas. But if uh, someone like a resolver filling multiple orders, you could share this transaction fees among other parties. If you are selling either, someone is buying either, uh, this automatically makes you share your fees on each, uh, uh, on each other. Uh, 
I'm not sure that there are big projects. Probably there are some not big ones. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I'm like curious why no one build it and it's not popular yet because it's uh, easy. And there are protocols which allows you to do this. For sure, one inch can't have all these functionalities because that's a lot. And that's why we build this protocol to be MIT licensed and anyone can use it or copy and use it or modify and use it. Yeah.